Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Sydney. I am a software engineer as well as content creator that focuses a lot on tech, a lot of lifestyle, as well as how to get yourself productive and much more mindful to help you have a better life. Today, this topic is pretty near and dear to my heart just because I realized that it has been about a year and some change that I have officially been a Java software engineer. Yay for me, I am super excited about that. I am so glad that I've had so many people supporting me and helping me on my journey and just thank Thank you all to all of those that have been watching that have been day ones basically for me and just helping me and make sure that I kind of get around the kind of difficulties that have been happening because 2020 and a panty just that was nuts. I cannot believe that I am saying that I have lived through a pandemic. I have lived through a much more big accumulation of black people dying by the hands of the police officers. I have been just trying to figure out much more holistically how I've been feeling when it comes to what my career is going to be, what my trajectory is going to be, as well as like what else I want to do when it comes to my content creation. So thank you all so much for being here and sticking around. And I hope that I can give you even even more content that is good for you, that makes me feel good and makes me feel happy. And hopefully we can be able to kind of like symmetrically, I, I don't know, just kind of whole round give even just more happiness to each other. That would be really great, right? I've realized that as this year has been pressing on, since we are technically in the new year, it has been a really good time for me to reflect on some of the lessons that I've learned in my first year as a software engineer that has been developing with code and production, my stuff is there, as well as some kind of lessons that, you know, people have told me on Twitter and in boot camps and different things, but it really didn't hit home until I actually was balls deep in the code while I see that my code is in production and it's just there and it's working or, or not working, you know, cause that happens too. I am here to talk about just 10 things that I have learned as a software engineer this year in just basically my kind of first year, just kind of doing more than I have done in the past. And so I'm grateful, sit back, relax. I'm a little bit cold, but we'll just, we'll go from there. We'll see what happens. The first thing that I want to really hit home for you guys is that for all of you little baby devs out there that are doing their best to try and figure out what exactly they want to do when it comes to programming, or if you're in your first job, congratulations, by the way, that you don't have to know everything and you will be hopefully surprised in a good way that a lot of the people that are around you, even though they are might be senior or just like much more experienced than you, they don't know anything either. This is just a whole big, huge guessing game when it comes to being able to program and figuring out what exactly is going to be a good solution to keep quality code, to keep that as clean as possible, and to make sure that you are getting the correct acceptance criterias or uh, objectives to whoever your customer is. The way that you're able to play it is just making sure that you admit that I don't know anything, but being willing to also be able to use the tools that you have in your system, whether or not it's being able to research with a mentor or Google, of course, Stack Overflow, whatever other resources that you have, use them to your advantage because you never know. You might be able to learn something that you'll be able to share with the group, share with your team, be able to reflect on with yourself and potentially use it to your advantage in other projects or just being able to be a better and more experienced developer as a whole. I am really grateful that I have had a community of people that I've been able to ask questions to or just kind of get my concerns out to figure out what direction that I want to go next when it comes to figuring out things that I didn't know. We all don't know anything and we're just going to completely still continuously not know everything on a day-to-day -day basis. So get used to that feeling. It's very uncomfortable. It's disgusting. Oh well, sit in it. This year I've also been able to be much more comfortable, probably because I've been sitting on the therapy couch for majority of the year, that feedback is always going to be something that is advantageous to you. Now, when I talk about feedback, I'm talking about constructive criticism or constructive complimenting or constructive feedback. And this is meaning that if you are able to ask for feedback, because I always think that asking for feedback is an incredible tool for you. And if somebody says something with 
possible answers or examples to what they are meaning to tell you when it comes to feedback, making sure that you kind of question, hmm, is this relevant information that I could use to better improve myself? If it is, great. If it's not, and you've been able to prove that in some type of like evidence or reflection on yourself, let it go. Next up, now for those of you who are still little baby devs that are still trying to figure out things in a professional setting, I highly implore you to make sure that you start whenever you can or whenever you get access to it, exploring the code base. I also believe that being able to just do those little investigations on your own and seeing how things work, putting out debug points, making sure that you set up your local server and just taking it out for a spin and seeing what exactly your code does is so helpful in the long run to understand what exactly you might need to do when a problem or when a story comes up and you're gonna have to solve the issue. This is not about trying to make any changes or accidentally putting anything into production. I'm sure that if you have any guardrails in a professional setting, that should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about that. But that is a really good sign that you are ready to investigate, ready to tackle on any problems that you might have, even though that you're hesitant. It's all about making sure that you are comfortable in the space that you're in, or at least like, uh, uh, at least less uncomfortable. Maybe that's the, the better choice of words for that. Being able to find a mentor as soon as possible, I think was the difference between like me crashing and burning as in just being able to at least like know a little bit more of what I'm doing on a daily basis and being able to get these tasks done a little bit faster so I can take on a bit more stories or being able to ask like much more critical questions when it comes to the degree of like severity or hardness, hardness of work that I'm working on. And I, I really appreciate being able to pair program as well. And so if you guys are really looking to get more out of your experience as a professional developer, make sure that you find somebody that you think will be really smart, really awesome to go to and ask them to be your mentor. I also have a video about that. I'll link it somewhere up here and in the description box below. So make sure you check it out and let me know what you think about it. I also implore everybody to get a dev journal as soon as you are able to. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. It just needs to be a place where you're able to record your successes, record the problems that you have on your daily tasks and making sure that you're able to kind of plan out something that you're mapping in your head onto a piece of paper so you're not forgetting anything or forgetting any steps that you're taking to solve an issue. Being able to just write everything down, that clears so much brain space for me to actually think about the task at hand, not the problem. So write everything down in a journal. I also have a video about that and I hope you enjoyed that video as well. Now I might get dragged from a couple of people when I say this, but I really need everybody to understand, and this is something that I have recently been going through, that even if you have some type of passion for being a developer, being an engineer, you're not going to exclusively need all 100% to be all in with that passion to be an engineer or a developer. And the fact that there are times and places where employers, companies believe and have those practices where to be eligible, you need to have so much work going on in your GitHub portfolio, or you need to have all of these projects done, or you need to have all of this passion, so-called, to be able to be considered eligible for being able to work at a place, that's bias. That is not an incredible way to filter out people who are really actually going to be able to do the work objectively and be able to solve problems from a different perspective. You'll just have a bunch of clones that are the same people that will work for free, which isn't necessarily the greatest thing. You'll have people working long hours and more prone to burnout. And there are a bunch of other deeper issues with that. There are plenty of resources about having to debate when it comes to being a passionate developer. But me personally, I don't live to code. I have other passions in my life. I love this YouTube channel. I'm on a podcast. I should post on Twitter. And that's something that I like to do in my free time that does not have to do 
any degree, way, form, or fashion with coding all of the time. And that is okay. And it should be okay for people to not have passions that are related to coding exclusively to be able to get a job as an engineer. I will link a couple of Twitter threads and talks that I know of that I have seen and observed for myself when it comes to the concept of passion, as well as being a developer and passionate about coding in the description box. So you guys can kind of see for yourself what I'm meaning with that, but you don't have to code 24 seven on off hours for free, all this volunteer work to be a coder, to be a developer, to be an engineer. It's just not worth your time. And honestly, you're going to be more prone to, bur to burn out if that is the case. Another thing that I really had to kind of get over when it comes to uh, my day-to-day -day tasks that <laughs> I, you're gonna struggle. You're always going to be on the struggle bus for a, a, any small stupid reason or any big silly reasons. It's not going to matter. It's going to be this like incredible imbalance of the two and just be comfortable with being incredibly uncomfortable all of the goddamn time and be very comfortable with making those uncomfortable decisions and asking those uncomfortable questions to people, even if you think that they're dumb, because you're not going to be able to solve the problem any other way if you don't have any solution that you've been able to foster yourself. And that is okay. Sometimes we need help. And again, going to my first point, we don't all know the answers. And that's kind of the point in philosophy of being able to code is that you're kind of uncomfortable with just seeing what you can get away with. And if there's a bug, then there's a bug. You'll be able to figure it out. It's fine. Ugh. Always ask questions if you are stuck. I think that there has been this big debate on when you should be asking questions and for how long should you be struggling in a problem. And I feel like this has been a moving goalpost for me, not to get too kind of into the weeds about this, but I've heard that sometimes I don't ask enough questions and then sometimes I ask for help too soon. And I, I really think that that is very subjective to whoever you talk to. All the times that I have been able to get this question answered in between a 15 minute time and an hour time is when you should be trying to struggle on a problem and then go ask for help is what I've always been taught. Sometimes I feel like a dummy and sometimes it's just like, you know what? I just need to get this problem solved. I need help. I'm waving the white flag. Let me see what I can figure out first before I start asking for help. That means making sure doing at least a little bit of research in that time frame, guys, but ask for help. I also want you guys to start advocating for yourself and being able to share the knowledge that you guys have learned when it comes to what you've discovered in your job. And maybe that just means you're able to teach potentially a more senior person or another junior person about some things that you've learned when it comes to potentially making up documentation or maybe a presentation or maybe something that is innovative when it comes to solving uh, another problem that is with your job. I'm not saying that this is something that you should always be like on the lookout for and everything, because there are going to always be some internal problems in a company or being able to share that knowledge that you have means that you are giving value, not to just yourself, but to your team and being able to kind of give yourself a sense of community. Even if you feel like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Even if you have that imposter syndrome, being able to teach and kind of give back to your team and your community is always going to be beneficial for you as well as beneficial to the other person that you're giving that value to. And if you are hoping to do more when it comes to sharing any knowledge that you have to your community, make sure that you start potentially creating content like a blog post or a tutorial or contribute to something that is a free resource online, like on GitHub and share it, share that with the world, because all of that is just helping another person that, that was in the same situation that you might've been at some point. And that's incredibly special. Again, as an educator, you're able to kind of give that gift of knowledge and value to a person and collaborate with as many people as possible. If you need help with anything, this also brings me to another point where it is super important 
important that not only are you able to bring value to your community and your workplace as a whole, but being able to explore communities outside of your workplace is going to help you grow overall when it comes to your experience as a developer. Whether that means that you're going to online meetups because we don't want you going in person, you can still die out here. There are communities on Twitter, Clubhouse, Meetup. There are all types of places and people that will be able to bring you some knowledge and you'll be able to bring knowledge to them as long as you contribute and stay active in the community. And this is a great way to network. I, I don't know if some of you realize, but just being able to just kind of talk your talk and see what people are asking and what questions and what answers that you can bring in terms of value to a community Community, you never know who is going to be able to see that and help you grow and foster a better relationship with your community and potentially find you another job. Like that's, that's perfect. That's a win-win situation. I feel like for everybody. Last but not least, I want to bring to your attention that you definitely need to make sure you have a good work-life balance, getting plenty of sleep, of course, drinking plenty of water and getting all that exercise and the joyful activities that you need. I think that being able to find a good work-life balance and having those boundaries to say no to whenever somebody is trying to impede on them, those need to be strong. Those need to be strong and established. And as long as you have all of these typical, just like little tidbits of advice that I feel like I've been able to kind of relearn and recondition myself to calibrate myself to, I think that you guys will be just fine in whatever encounters or things that you decide to do in the future. And if you have any other pieces of advice that you feel like need to be hit home for some people, especially when they're in their kind of first software engineer developer job, make sure that you leave a comment below because I would love to hear some of your other takes on what exactly you need to have when it comes to those little tidbits of advice and things. And if you liked this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I come out with weekly content. And this year in 2021, I'm really hoping to get out at least 50 videos this year once a week. I am very excited about this goal, so make sure that you hold me to it. Make sure that you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and if you are wanting to check out any more of my content, make sure that you stay tuned because there's going to be a bunch of stuff up here. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have a good day and I hope this was productive for you. See you soon.